have a lot to discuss in this episode. Oh my goodness. So we are trying to wrap up the prelude episodes that I wanted to do leading into Dark Web. And now Dark Web is over. <laughs> and I'm recording this actually for like the third time because I keep changing what content uh, and stories we're going to discuss in this one. So let's just try to dive in and talk about the return of both Kane and Ben Riley because the last we left, Kane died at the end of Spider-Verse, and before that, Ben Riley died at the end of the Clone Saga in the 90s. So where have these guys been? Now, you know, how are they going to come back? And for Kane, it's very simple, because two pages after he died in Spider-Verse, boom, he comes right back. He breaks out of the shell, but he is now no longer the other. So he doesn't have that ability anymore to resurrect. So this is, chances are, his last time he can resurrect. So it looks like Kane is now on borrowed time. If someone kills him this time, there's no coming back. And that's kind of the, the thing they try to set up. Like, Kane, the Kane could really die this time. And it's like, yeah, sure, it's comics. Uh, because soon after this, uh, and after Kane's return at the end of Spider-Verse, we get the clone conspiracy. And in this storyline, the Jackal has returned, who created the clones in the first place. Uh, but now he's dressed like Anubis. He's got like an Anubis mask on. And he's created this new technology called New You. Uh, and basically, this is a way for him to use the cloning technology of Miles Warren and resurrect people in a sense. Like he finds people that are dying of major illnesses and he's able to clone them and then put the original person in cryostasis and kind of harvest organs and DNA from them to keep the clones around. So until the person who was originally cloned can find a cure to their disease. So he thinks he's doing like, he's like, hey, I'm turning over a new leaf. I'm actually gonna use this cloning technology to save people and that's what we're gonna do. And, uh, and of course, Spider-Man gets wind of it uh, through the rhino uh, because Rhino's uh, wife or sister, someone comes back and Rhino gets involved and so does J. Jonah Jameson and other people. And of course it leads to, a, uh, you know, another Gwen Stacy clone coming around um, and, and all the stuff that typical ha uh, typically happens in a Jackal story. So Clone Conspiracy is written by Dan Slott. It's a kind of a mess a little bit in my opinion of a story, but it brings us back uh, Kane, who's now, you know, no longer the other, and he's teaming up with Spider-Gwen to find out who this new Jackal really is. And I believe this is the story that got me blocked by Dan Slott on Twitter, because I was trying to go back, and I'm like, why did Dan Slott block me? And I thought I was in a thread where people were talking political stuff, and I got pulled into it or tagged in it, and I thought I, we just got all blocked together or something. But I think it was actually this. I think it was this story where I guessed that who the new Jackal was, <laughs> like one issue in. And I think I tweeted it. Oh my God, I just figured it out. The new Jackal is Ben Riley, And that's what it turned out to be. Uh, ben Riley was being tortured all these years by the Jackal. Miles Warren uh, has been secretly working on resurrecting Ben Riley because he was the nearest perfect version of a clone he's ever made that never degenerated until Ben died at the hands of Green Goblin. So jackal's like we got to figure this out we got to find a way to make more ben riley's and so he took some of that dust of ben riley's i guess found traces of it and has been recreating ben riley's for a decade now and killing them every time they're failures and bringing you know and re you know, doing it again and again and again um in this endless loop so ben riley is being resurrected through this new u technology and killed and he's that's happened to him like a hundred or so times and every time that's happened apparently as we find out later his soul, in a way, has been going back down to hell and then back up to earth and back down to hell every time he dies and gets resurrected. So it's constant torture for him until the one time where he was able to break free, kill Miles Warren, and take over as the new Jackal, um, you know, and take this technology and try to in some way use it for good and bring back all the people that Spider-Man has ever let die or died on Spider-Man's watch. And that was Ben's way of trying to get back into good graces with Peter but it doesn't go well, obviously. And Gwen Stacy teams up with Peter and they try to take down, uh, you know, uh, Ben Riley, the Jackal, um, superior uh, Spider-Man, Dr. Octopus. He gets a new body and he is not fond of uh, the Jackal either. And once he finds out it's a Peter clone um, and then also Kane is working with Spider-Gwen and they try to get to the bottom of things. So that's kind of the story of clone conspiracy. And that brings back Ben Riley and it brings back Kane. And at the end of the story, obviously the Jackal's defeated, Ben Riley's defeated. And he slips away. He, he gets away, he slinks away, and Kane goes after him. And that leads right into an ongoing series that Ben it's called Ben Riley Scarlet Spider. And that's where Peter David came back and was like, all right, I'm going to bring this character back and we're going to write an ongoing series with him. So in this five-volume trade paperback series, we get the Slingers back, which is very cool for me. I'm a big Slingers fan. Here's another picture of them right here. Um, but in this series, we have Ben Riley going to Las Vegas. And in Las Vegas, he actually... 
is uh, teams up with a mobster lady who runs a corporation um, and runs a couple of casinos and her daughter is dying and she was on the list to go be part of New You um, before New You was destroyed and defeated by Spider-Man. So her daughter never got saved or cloned or whatever the process was because she didn't know what the process was. So that's when Ben goes, okay, well, I'll cure your daughter. Let me get you know the stuff I need and I'll do this right. I'll actually try to redeem myself and I'll, I'll save someone. So instead of just cloning your daughter, I'll just straight up find a way to save her. And that's Ben's mission on this is kind of a redemption mission. And while he's doing it, Kane has pursued him to Las Vegas and is trying to kill him. And so as that story is going on, we have the Slingers, like I said, return because Hornet has returned. And the, you know, the Slingers are like, hey, how's Hornet back? Because Eddie died. Eddie was the, the, the true identity of the Hornet. And they're like, he died years ago. Wolverine killed him uh, during Enemy of the State. So how can he be alive? Well, it turns out it's not Hornet at all. And there's like some demonic things going on. And Cyber has been resurrected, which is a Wolverine villain. And he took on the mantle of Hornet temporarily. Not really sure why. Uh, but it gr got the attention of the, the Slingers. And they all band together with Scarlet Spider and Kane. And they defeat Cyber and, and all the villains. And then they end up running into Mysterio and fighting Mysterio and finding out Mysterio's daughter is actually a robot and has been this whole time. Uh, maybe, uh, who knows? Like it's kind of left uh, ambiguous and vague. But, you know, Mysterio has been to hell and back and Ben has been to hell and back. And so he's trying to make a connection there and try to, you know, work out some way where they can save this little girl. Um, but that doesn't work out too well for Ben either. And it leads them into a crossover called Damnation, uh, which is uh, not really well done. Uh, it brings back, uh, you know, Donny Cates was a co-writer on this. Um, and, and you know, like Donny Cates, a lot of recycled ideas get used. And so there was a, a moment where Ben has a bunch of guns on him. And I'm like, okay, but that's been on a cover from the 90s. There was this one cover of Scarlet Spider where he's jumping through the air with guns on him. So they kind of bring that visual back and uh, have a story where basically, like, like I said, Donny Cates... He finds ways to power up everybody, you know, mix powers, everything. So in Damnation, uh, the storyline here, and Nick Spencer, I think, is the other co-writer, they do a story where in Las Vegas, Mephisto comes and turns everyone into Ghost Riders. <laughs> so everyone has Ghost Rider heads for no reason at all. Uh, you know, the, the one creature that Mephisto has created that he can't control, uh, other than his son, um, he can't control the Ghost Rider, but yet he's going to turn other people into Ghost Riders and control them or whatever. It's such a silly story. Uh, and so anyway, so that gets caught up in this. And honestly, I think that was the downfall of this series, because when Damnation happens in this story and Ben and everybody become Ghost Riders and Wong and everything, it's 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 neat, but it really does destroy the momentum of the main book. And after this, I think Peter David kind of struggled with getting the book back on track. So when the book ends in volume five, I will say it was a pretty weak ending. I still think Peter David did the best he could, but this felt like one of those books where, um, which happens a lot, I feel like, with Peter David. If he's not on a miniseries, a lot of times his books get messed with a lot where they go, hey, editorial's coming back. We This book's not selling. We got to wrap it up. You got two issues. Originally, we were going to give you this many issues. Now we're going to give you this many. And this feels like a very rushed ending. But it is a battle for the soul of Ben Riley between Ben and Mephisto. Um, and then angels show up and they help try to save the little girl. And that's the thing is the story wraps up too conveniently where Ben doesn't really earn his redemption. He doesn't, he's not the catalyst to save the little girl in a way. It's, it really, it's an angel that kind of does most of the work for Ben. Um, and so that is a little frustrating because I feel like Ben never really earns his redemption in this. But after this storyline, Ben does go on to re-enter the Marvel Universe as the Scarlet Spider. And he does show up in an Iron Man book that uh, I think Cantwell wrote. And he was in a couple issues there during the Korvac Cor stuff that he was doing. But before Ben went into that Iron Man book, there was another big crossover with Spider-Man called Spider-Geddon. And in this one, the new U technology that Ben helped create with Jackal, after you know, or used the Jackal's technology to create new U, um, that technology is taken over by the superior Spider-Man, AKA Dr. Octopus. And he's using it to try to create a new body for himself so he can go back to being Dr. Octopus because he's kind of in a hybrid Peter Parker body. So he's using this cloning technology, which um, awakens the Inheritors because the Inheritors were last left at the end of Spider-Verse on another planet. Well, the you know, Superior Spider-Man needed some of their technology. So by using it, he reactivated their ability to respawn. So they kill each other and respawn into new bodies and thus creating another Spider-Verse event, which is called Spider-Geddon. And in this one, you have Superior Spider-Man creating a group of Spider-Men that are willing to kill. So he's got like Spider-Man Noir and a couple other characters that are willing to kill the bad guys because the Inheritors are very bad and there's very you know few ways to stop them other than 
killing them and they try to stick him on another planet or another universe and that obviously didn't work now because of Doc Ock. So now he wants to kill them so he can continue using their technology. So he convinces some other Spider-Man who are willing to kill to join him. Meanwhile, Miles is the, like Civil War. It's like Civil War all over again too. Miles doesn't want to kill. And so he's on this side with the good guys, uh, the other Spider-Man who don't want to kill. And they all lead this you know, big battle between the, each other and against the Inheritors. And that's pretty much what Spider-Geddon is, which also sounds like the plot a little bit of the new Across the Spider-Verse movie, because it sounds like Miguel O'Hara is going to be someone who is a Spider-Man who's willing to kill, and he knows Miles won't, so he doesn't want Miles in on their mission. And that's kind of what Spider-Geddon's storyline is. And so during this event, you have Superior Spider-Man, or Doc Ock, using Ben Riley. He says, hey man, like you use that new you technology, that new you technology, we're going to take that technology and we're going to use it to defeat the inheritors uh, somehow, you know, and Ben's like, okay, how do we do it? And he goes, we need to perfect it. So what they do is Superior Spider-Man ends up using Ben as bait and it gets Ben killed kind of, but then Ben resurrects. And he, as he says, when he comes back from his resurrection at the end of the story, he's back to factory setting. So he's actually not uh, evil anymore. Uh, he doesn't have those tendencies to use the new, new U technology to hurt people in the way he was hurting them before. He's actually is Ben and he's saying he's the same Ben from the nineties clone saga. And some of the stuff he's done in recent years are just like a, a haze memory, not really, you know, driving him or motivating him. So by this standard now, Kane is like, okay, I accept that he's a good guy now. So, you know, Spider-Man universe is being restored. Ben is here. He can help Peter. I barely helped Erase Lee and the new warriors. Uh, I don't have much of a purpose anymore if Ben is a good guy again. So I'm going to try to sacrifice myself. And he goes on a side mission with Spider-Woman, uh, Jessica Drew, and tries to sacrifice himself to save everyone. But Jessica and the others don't let him, and they save him at the last second. So the story ends with Spider-Geddon, where the Inheritors are defeated once and for all. A superior Spider-Man, his team doesn't win. Miles and the other heroes rise up and save the day. Um, and then they work together with some of the other ones, and they turn some of superior Spider-Man's men, you know, the Spider-Man on his side, they turn them into the, you know, onto Miles' side. And then Kane and Ben survive this event. So that's where their story kind of ends so far. And I am going to make one more video where we kind of follow the adventures of Ben from here moving forward because Kane straight up disappears after this. After Spider-Geddon, Kane is not to be seen anywhere ever again so far, as far as I know, um, in the main continuity of the Marvel Universe. And Ben does, like I said, he pops up in that Iron Man book uh, real briefly, but he's going to actually take over as the new Spider-Man in the next episode we talk about. And that'll be the final episode we make on the road to Dark Web. And then we can finally get into the Dark Web stuff. So I'm glad I re-recorded this and made it more succinct because the last one was like 35 minutes long. And this one, I just wanted to give the broad strokes because I don't really like some of the stories we talked about in this episode, but I just wanted to give you the basic beats of what, you know, Ben and Kane went through and how they came back. Um, and so, and I thought it was a tragic story, the way they brought Ben back, and I liked that. But, you know, after Peter David, no one's really building on that. And so what we're going to get into next, we're going to do uh, an overview of this issue, which is the prequel to the Dark Web, and there's also a free comic book day issue we're going to look at, and then all the Spider-Man Beyond stuff. So that'll be our discussion in the next video. So I hope you stay subscribed so you don't miss out on that. And then soon after, I'll finally upload those Dark Web videos that I made, and, uh, and we'll get all these reviews up to you guys and all these discussion videos, because that's pretty much what they are. I'm doing kind of reviews slash discussions on these, and uh, but just not as detailed because boy, oh boy, I just really didn't like Dark Web. But it had some moments, and we're going to definitely get into those moments for sure, including this book which we'll talk about next. And it was an issue that I actually enjoyed and it set up Ben pretty well and it gave me a little bit of hope. I just wish they paid that hope off. But uh, that's where we are now. So we actually are ending one of these where Ben and Kane are both alive. They're both in the Marvel Universe and where they go from here, time will tell. You know, Kane, we don't know yet, but Ben, we're going to talk about very soon. So thanks so much. See you in the next episode. Peace.